Hi everyone, I wanted to take a couple minutes and do some gravity and circular motion problem solving. So these are pages one and two from the UCM and gravity worksheet on A plus physics. All right, problem one, a space probe is launched into space from Earth's surface. Which graph represents the relationship between the magnitude of the gravitational force exerted on Earth by the space probe and the distance between the space probe and the center of Earth? Well, to do that, I have to remember that the relationship between the gravitational force and distance is g m1 m2 over r squared. And the key here, our variable on our x-axis, is the distance between their centers, r squared. And since that's squared in the denominator, this is an inverse square law. Correct answer, 2. All right, number 2. We have a diagram showing two bowling balls, a and b, and they're placed two meters apart. If their masses are seven kilograms each, what's the magnitude of the gravitational force between them? Well, I'm going to do this one over here on the right. Force of gravity is the universal gravitational constant times the product of the masses divided by the square of the distance between their centers, or 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Each of the masses is seven kilograms and they happen to be two meters apart. So when I put that into my calculator very carefully, I come up with something right around 8.17 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. That should be answer three. Let's go on and try number three. A 60 kilogram physics student would weigh 1560 newtons on the surface of planet, planet X. What's the magnitude of the acceleration due to gravity on that planet? Well, to do that, I'm going to start by writing that the weight of the object, which I write as mg, is 1560 newtons. Therefore, g must be 1560 newtons over mass, which is 60 kilograms, or about 26 meters per second squared. Answer four. Moving on down to number four. Earth's mass is approximately 81 times the mass of the moon. If the Earth ex exerts a gravitational force of magnitude f on the moon, what's the magnitude of the gravitational force of the moon on the Earth? Ah, trick question. This is just Newton's third law. Force of object one on object two is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the force of two on one. So our answer here has to be F as well. Number five, an object weighs 100 newtons on Earth's surface. When it's moved to a point one Earth radius above Earth's surface, it will weigh what? Well, we're doubling R. And since this is an inverse square law, if we double R, then we're going to get a force that's one fourth, that's quartered. 25 newtons. Coming back up here for number six. A container of rocks with a mass of 65 kilograms is brought back from the moon's surface where the acceleration due to gravity is 1.62 meters per second squared. What is the weight of the container of rocks on Earth's surface? Well, the weight is just going to be m times g, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So it's 65 kilograms, the mass of the rocks, times 9.81 meters per second squared, or about 638 newtons. Answer one. Number seven shows us a graph of force and mass for an object near the surface of the Earth. What does the slope represent? Well, the way I do this is if I look at the slope, that's rise over run. And our rise is gonna be change in gravitational force divided by the change in mass. But gravitational force near the surface of the Earth is mg divided by m. Cancel out. The slope is going to be g, the acceleration due to gravity. And let's take a look here at number eight. Person weighing 785 newtons on the surface of Earth. So m times the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 785 newtons they would weigh 298 newtons on the surface of Mars. mg Mars equals 298 newtons. 
what's the magnitude of the gravitational field strength on the surface of Mars? So we're looking for that. Now, in order to know that, it'd sure be helpful to know the mass. And I can get that from my first equation up here. This implies, then, that the mass of the object is 785 newtons over the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, 9.81 meters per second squared, or about 80 kilograms. Well, knowing that, then, I can say that the acceleration due to gravity on Mars, or gravitational field strength, is going to be 298 newtons over the mass, which we just determined is 80 kilograms, which is going to be about 3.72 newtons per kilogram. Answer two. All right, let's move on to the next page. Here we have a passage. I'll give you a second to read it here. <clears throat> Net force on a planet is due primarily to the other planets and the sun. Now they talk about a discrepancy between the calculated orbit and the observed orbit, and then they give you a bunch of data here. And then we're asked to answer a couple questions. Number nine, what fundamental force is the author referring to in this passage as a force between planets? Well, obviously our force here is gravity. Next, it says, based on the diagram at the right, showing Neptune, Uranus, and the Sun in a straight line, Neptune is 1.63 times 10 to the 12th meters from Uranus. Calculate the magnitude of the interplanetary force of attraction between Uranus and Neptune at that point, showing all work. Well, that's just Newton's law of universal gravitation. Force of gravity is going to be g m1 m2 over r squared. g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. The mass of Uranus I can get from our table up here. I can also get the mass of Neptune to fill in my formulas. 8.73 times 10 to the 25th kilograms and 1.03 times 10 to the 26th kilograms and we're given the information that the distance between them is 1.63 times 10 to the 12th meters and again that's the distance between their centers so 1.63 times 10 to the 12th meters squared. When I solve all this, I come up with a total force of 2.26 times 10 to the 17 newtons. All right. The magnitude of the force the sun exerts on Uranus is 1.41 times 10 to the 21 newtons. How is it possible for the sun to exert a greater force on Uranus than Neptune exerts on Uranus? Well, if we look here, the sun has a much greater mass. So how is that possible? Sun has a much larger mass. Number 12. When Earth and the moon are separated by a distance of 3.84 times 10 to the 8th meters, the magnitude of the gravitational force of attraction is 2 times 10 to the 20th newtons. What would be the magnitude of this force if, the dis if they were separated by half that amount? Well, in this case, if you happen to cut the distance in half because it's an inverse square law, the force of gravity is going to be quadrupled. So if it was 2 times 10 to the 20th, we quadruple that, we get 8 times 10 to the 20th, answer 4. And number 13, an astronaut weighs 800 newtons on the surface of Earth. What is the weight of the astronaut 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters above the surface of the Earth? Well, the trick here is realizing that if this is the radius of the Earth, they're now at that new distance from the Earth. The radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters, and they're 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters further away. So in this case, we've doubled the distance from the center of the Earth. If we double our force of gravity, 
is quartered. Again, that inverse square law relationship. So if the astronaut weighed 800 newtons on the surface, the astronaut is going to weigh one fourth of that or 200 newtons when they're an extra one Earth radius away from the surface of the Earth.